Sir, why are you so angry with me? What harm have I done to you? The melodious voice of the Kajumbalar princess melted Van Diathavan. It was this woman who really got the idea of what to be angry about. Bongazali appeared before his mind's eye for a moment and disappeared. What is the justification to be angry with this woman for her sake? Madam. I'm sorry. I didn't say anything like that. I just said I'd wait outside until they'd seen the soothsayer and left. I'm in no hurry. Even now. There's no need for you to leave. I'm glad to know you're in no hurry. Actually, I didn't come here to see the soothsayer. I've lost the least bit of faith in his soothsayer. Goddess. Your will is my blessing. You yourselves will realize that once upon a time my fortune-telling was not false. Realize and praise this poor man. Said the soothsayer. We can take care then. Said Vanati, and looking at Van Diathavan, said, Sir. I came here to see you. I saw you on the way on horseback. I thought you would stop and inquire. You are gone. I am not too surprised at that. Why should this orphan girl be so concerned? She said. Vandiyadeva's eyes seemed to be filled with tears. Devi, what is this word? The wealthy daughter of a small velar of Kajumbalar Parantaka, the foster daughter of the southern army chief Buthivikrama Kesari, the intimate friend of the old Ilayara Prati, who would admit herself to be such an orphan. It would be disrespectful to stand on the road and ask. I have come here. Nothing else, if I have something to do. Yes, sir. There is something that must be done by you. I have come into this house to ask you for an important favor. Tell me, if there is anything I can do. Could there be even one thing that they cannot do, what? I have heard some of what happened to them during the journey to Ceylon. Can you first promise to give me the assistance I request? Van Diathavan hesitated Devi. It would be better if you tell me what kind of help. He said. Yes, I should not deceive them and get promises. So I will tell you the matter. The soothsayer may know, so there is no harm. I have decided to pursue the Buddha Dharma and become a Pikshanai. What to do? What word is this? Don't be together. The world will not tolerate. Impractical. After listening to what the soothsayer and Vandiyadeva said to each other, Vanati said, Yes, I have decided to become a Buddhist nun. Why do you object so much to that? What is wrong? Haven't many women in the country of Palantamil taken asceticism? Didn't Madhavi's daughter Manamegala become a divinity by doing asceticism? Mani Megala don't we praise her today as goddess? I have no such great desire. I tried to end this useless life. I failed. It seems that God's will is that I should be alive for some time. I want to spend the time I can by joining a Buddhist monastery and doing charity. You won't hesitate to help me, will you? She said. A small doubt arose in Van Diathavan's mind. It startled him. Devi. Their decision is not fair, but I have no right to say so. The elders of their family should give their opinion about it. It seems that their great father Senate Hapati Buthivikrama Kesari is coming back as soon as possible. Sir. I'm not going to wait for anyone, I'm not going to listen to anyone's ideas. I've made up my mind. I'm asking for your help. What help can I do in this matter, Goddess? I tell you, I have set out to go to Sudamani Vihara, Nagipatanam. I intend to go there and receive initiation from the Buddhist priests. You must accompany me as far as Nagipatanam. That is the help I ask for. Vandiyativan threw it away. The princess of Kajumbalar is no slouch. She must have overheard half of what we and the younger brat were talking about. She asks him to know all the details. Nagipatanam set out to Sudamani Viharat, with the sole intention of meeting the prince there. It cannot be complicit for a single day. Mother. I am so sorry. The help you ask is beyond my power. What is this strange? 
is it impossible for someone who has gone to Eland and achieved so many miracles to bring this orphan girl to Nagaipatnam? Devi. Nothing is impossible. But I cannot do it now. The first minister and the younger Prati have ordered me to hurry to Kanchi. I will go with the straw they gave me. I said I cannot do it because of the weather. If there is another occasion. Yes, yes. If you don't want to, you can give any number of reasons. So there is no harm. I set out with the intention of traveling alone. At some places on the way, I saw the gatherings of Kalamukas. I got a little scared. There is a god who is obliged to save all living beings. Shall I put my burden on him and leave? An ascetic who has decided to renounce the world and become an ascetic. Who will do what to the demon woman? I'm going. So do you. After saying that, Vanatha left. The soothsayer continued to follow her and said, Devi. Devi. It's getting dark. The new moon is coming. And the clouds are gathering in the northeast. Let's spend the night in this poor man's hut and leave in the morning. Said. No, so did. I am sorry. I was thinking of going to Tiravara and staying the night. It was this man who refused to come to help me. Will someone not be found in Tiravara? I am not even worried about my life. What is the use of this to anyone? These were the last words that fell on the soothsayer's ear and Vandiyathevan's ear. Vanatha got on the palanquin waiting at the door and went up the palanquin. Vandiyadeva and the soothsayer stood looking at it until Palaka disappeared from sight. Then Vandiyathevan said, the princess of Kajumbalar was very timid till some time ago. The other friends of the younger Prati were praising her for it. They scared her by leaving a toy crocodile floating in the river, even I was fooled by it. Now suddenly how has this girl got such courage? She has set out to travel alone. What's strange? How come Ilya Prati agreed to this? He said. It surprises me too. Last time this woman came to this hut she suddenly fainted and fell down, she hesitated and spoke in Eneswaram. I doubt if she was the princess of Kajumbalar. How boldly and boldly did she speak today? What do you think could have caused such a sudden change of heart? He asked. Some important news must have caused a great shock to her mind. What important message could there be? Why? Isn't the news that Pani's Salvara was brought by the sea enough? There was talk that this girl and the prince might get married. When the soothsayer said this, Vandiyathevan said, which could have given her such a shock, whether it was the news that Pani's Salvara had been taken away by the sea, or the news that she had survived and was in Nagapatanam, or the news I had told about Pungazali. He thought that. Yes, soothsayer. The Kajumbalar dynasty is a hereditary Virasiva. Did this woman suddenly become a devotee of Buddhism? He said. Perhaps it's a progenitor scent, said the soothsayer. Will I leave for Nagaipatanam Sudamani Viharam? That amazes me too. Can't you tell by looking in your astrology? Brother. How can this be known through Suthita Shastra? It belongs to Atatala Shastra. Solitary is a scripture. Why not? Have you never heard of the poet's trick? I remember hearing that there was such a book. There is a chapter in that book called Atatal. There are ten songs in it. Really? Give them a couple of good songs. All are good songs. Valuvar says that one is one who dresses up as a saint, pretends to be dead, does not divulge secrets no matter how much his enemies harass him and works tirelessly. He has also said that kings should deal with one thing with another. Oh you mean you haven't heard all these songs? Vandiyathevan was also surprised. When he got time, he decided to do something else after reading Thirukkural. What kind of scholar must he have been who wrote about such royal systems a thousand years ago? After talking for a while Vandiyathevan left. Let's stay here tonight and leave in the morning. He did not hear what the soothsayer said. I will come another time, then I will be their guest, he said. Next time you come here you will see that my sorcery has worked. 
said the soothsayer. Sir, soothsayer. You did not say anything to the soothsayer? If you had, would they not have worked? Saying that and laughing, Vandiyadeva got on his horse and left. A short distance from the astrologer's house there was only one path. He also had to go the same way as the tooth. Then the path split into two. A path led northward to the bank of Kalata. Another one headed southeast towards Tiravarur. Vandiyadevan saw him going to his teeth far away on Tiravarurch Road. For a moment his heart fluttered. The princess of Kajumbalar has come to refuse the help she asked for. If she really needs help, if there's any danger along the way, can I forgive myself when I hear the news later? Don't you have to regret for a long time about the refusal to go? But what to do? The order given by the Prime Minister and Junior Pratt was very strict. I cannot interfere in other matters now. It is enough to have interfered in unrelated matters a few times before. All Workadian has warned otherwise. Besides, it is unthinkable to take Goddess Vanatha to Nagipatanam Sudamani Viharat. Having thus decided, Vandiyadeva turned the horse towards the path of Kalathakara. At the same time an ominous voice of Veer, a very very soft female voice, seemed to be heard, and he turned around with a start, not seeing the palanquin. The road there might have turned sharply. However, Vandiyathevan decided in a moment that he should go and see. So nothing is going to be delayed. The horse galloped away. Soon the road came close to a speed bump. The sight he saw there made Vandiyadeva's heart stop. A woman was tied to a tree. Her mouth was stuffed with cloth. It was dark at first so I didn't know who it was. He went closer and looked. Walking with Vanati's palanquin turned out to be a sad woman. She was moaning and trying to loosen her bandages. Vandiyadeva jumped down from his horse, first took off the cloth that had been stuffed around his mouth and untied the bandages. It stuck in his mind that it was not built that strong. Woman, what has happened? Tell me quickly. Where is Palaku? Where is your mistress? He asked nervously. The sad girl answered with a frown. As the road turned sharply, seven or eight men suddenly came running from the cover of the nearby trees. Skulls and maces were found in the hands of some of them. Two of them hit Sadie on the head and pushed her down. They covered the mouth with a cloth. In the meantime the others said something terrible to the bearers of the Palak, who turned away from the path and ran with the Palak at the crossroad. The others also went on, but did not hear the voice of Goddess Venati. After saying this, the printer also pointed out the cross path that led to the tooth. Vandiyadeva jumped on his horse saying, Lady! You go to the house of the soothsayer. I will try to find your mistress. The horse turned back from Rajapat and crossed the road. It went at high speed without looking at hill, ditch, forest, or plant. 